Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show. Matt, we're talking Eclipse Awards. Hey, that's always one of our favorite shows where we get to take a look at some of the best racing from 2019. Matt and I make our predictions for all the big awards right now on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing well, Matt. And I want to kind of talk about the best racing of 2019 and what better way than to predict the Eclipse Awards. Are you ready, sir? I am absolutely ready. Let's go from the two-year-olds. Yeah, and we still have a few weeks left in racing, Matt. So some of these possibly could change, but we feel pretty confident about most. As Matt said, we're going to start with the two-year-olds. Let's start with the ladies, the juvenile fillies, Matt. And I think this award is put to bed with British Idiom. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. I guess, you know, I guess the three races, three wins, including the Breeders' Cup, that's about as good as we can expect from a two-year-old in today's world of racing. Yeah, three for three. You know, we might uh, we might still see two-year-olds with more races on their resume that win Eclipse Awards, but you're right. That, that's the trend nowadays. But what I really like about British Idiom from the Brad Cox barn, Matt, is this daughter of Flashback did it everywhere. You know, uh, she, she ran in some important trucks, but she did it across the country. She did it at Saratoga, she did it at Keeneland, and she did it at Santa Anita. That, that's a pretty good resume of racetracks to have your three victories. And when you cap it off with an impressive win in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies, you get a check mark and an Eclipse Award. Get the Eclipse Award. Give it to British Idiom. Three for three, two time grade winner. She's your two year old Philly champion. Now, the two year old male champion, Matt, could be a little bit more of a question mark. We are going to agree on this, folks, but we're going to agree with our asterisks. You're going to see our producer, Brett Workman, put up the name Tis the Law as our two year old champion, Matt. But th there's another race. He's only run two times, and there's another race coming for Tis the Law. It's at Churchill Downs, and I think that's really important as we're discussing the two-year-old male Eclipse Award winner. That's for sure. I think you and I both like what we've seen from the Barkley Tag Trainer. We talked about this horse last week, right, folks, in our uh, first Kentucky Derby contenders uh, contenders list. Sacatoga, Funny Side Connections. We loved his champagne where he beat Greenlight Go in there. Tis the law. The uh, Barkley Tag said, no, we're not going across the country all the way to the Breeders' Cup. We're going to go to Churchill Downs, get a race in the track in the Kentucky Jockey Club. So you and I both feel at this point we like Tis the Law. But should he not win that race? Does it divert back to the Breeders' Cup juvenile winner, Storm the Court? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Matt. I, I was going to say Tis the Law became our leader for this Eclipse Award because of the chaos that ensued in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile with Dennis's moment stumbling badly at the start and long shots running one, two, three. Now, Tis the Law will be the favorite in the Kentucky Jockey Club, a, a pretty big two-year-old race out here at Churchill Downs. If he joins British Idiom for three for three, Matt and I are going to say the son of Constitution, the hot young sire Constitution, will be the two-year-old male champion for Sacatoga Stable. But Matt's right. If he does not win the Kentucky Jockey Club, which is over Thanksgiving uh, weekend here at Churchill Downs, Matt, then it opens the door. And I think it opens the door for a couple of Breeders' Cup winners. You mentioned Storm the Court, two for four, a maiden win and a Breeders' Cup upset juvenile winner. But what about the undefeated turf horse structure, who's got two graded stakes wins, Breeders' Cup juvenile turf, and he's undefeated in three starts? Yeah, Brian, and, and certainly good record. Certainly very well qualified, but up to this point, you know, for the past two, three years, we've kind of had that discussion of uh, a two-year-old turf horse versus the two-year-old dirt horses in the Eclipse Award, and, and they've come up short thus far. Right, but if Tis the Law loses in the Kentucky Jockey Club, it reopens the debate and I think it will be an interesting debate with Storm the Court being a very shaky winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Matt, if you look at his resume this year. So it might be time for a turf horse. 
Uh, but uh, Matt and I agree. If Tis the Law wins here at Churchill Downs next week, Kentucky Jockey Club, the award should be his. All right, Matt, we're going to move quickly on to the three-year-olds. Let's start with the Phillies. And uh, we have a little disagreement, our first disagreement of this Eclipse Award prediction show here on Horse Center, Matt. You're saying one Philly. I'm saying another. Let me think about mine first. Kurana, Matt, four races, three wins a second. Her only second was when she chased a really fast pace in the cotillion and, and, and got uh, uh, run down late by a street band. Other than that, she's got two big grade one wins in New York. The acorn was super impressive. She beat Serengeti Empress two out of two times this year. She's my three-year-old Philly champion. Yeah, Brian, and hey, I, I get it. You know, uh, uh, Chad Brown horse going the distance, uh, and and these kind of awards usually go to the horse to the two-turn horses in here, uh, and typically that's the way I feel. But but I've been impressed. I've been won over by Kafefe uh, and what she's done sprinting. And the thing, I guess, that tips it for me is that she is a Breeders' Cup winner. She beat all their horses uh, to do it in that race. Her win, her victory in the test was very impressive. Six starts, five wins, one third place this year. Uh, a tough decision in here. I guess the three-year-old fillies and the males uh, uh, also are, are an area of debate. Yeah, I think you're right, Matt. They're in debate, and and certainly uh, we're going to need President Trump to, uh, to 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 tell us how you pronounce this uh, Philly's name. You say Kofefe, I say Kofefe. Either way, she had a wonderful year, and I could certainly see why you would have her as this real Philly champion. Five for six, where Garana's only raced four times. Uh, Garana again. I think she had an excuse in her only lost two Grade One wins. Kofefe. Two grade one wins. Uh, some of the other races she won this year weren't as uh, big races. So you got the Breeders' Cup uh, Philly Mare Sprint and the Test, or you got the Acorn and the Coaching Club American Oaks. You got two turns versus one turn. Let's see what happens. All right, Matt, you mentioned the three-year-old males a little bit already. I think, Matt, when uh, Omaha Beach was beaten in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile and uh, Code of Honor ran poorly and was uh, nowhere near the uh, the, the top uh hitting the board in the Breeders' Cup Classic, I think that really did kind of maybe even clinch it for Maximum Security. Maximum Security beat Code of Honor, or at least finished ahead of Code of Honor both times they raced. Maximum Security won the Florida Derby. Maximum Security won the Haskell. It came back with a nice win in a graded sprint stakes recently. Uh, only one horse finished ahead of him this year. Of course, he was taken and down in the Kentucky Derby. But I think you look at Maximum Security head-to-head -head with Code of Honor, and if you look what he did over the whole year, I, I think it's just a little bit Omaha or Code of Honor. Maximum Security will have to race again. And uh, again, like tis the law, the Cigar Mile could be important in this race. But if Maximum Security wins the Cigar Mile, done deal. He's your three-year-old yeah. champion. I agree with that, Brian. Absolutely. If uh, Maximum Security wins the uh, Cigar Mile against older horses, it's going to wrap wrap things up, you know, and I think uh, the disqualification, the asterisk for disqualified races is a little bit significant it, throughout this uh, Eclipse Award discussion. We'll get to it again with, uh, with Vino Rosso, so I think different voters are going to deal with that in different ways, and that could be a factor in there. The, the other interesting part of the uh, Cigar Mile is that Spun to Run, who upset Omaha Beach in that dirt mile is coming back in the cigar mile and he has been the now horse uh, in these last uh, few races just has been spectacular Brian hey what if spun to run upsets maximum security in the cigar mile well of course we have to wait and see what happens in the cigar mile which is uh, Saturday December 7 at Aqueduct Matt but uh, for me I think Maximum Security is going to get the award regardless of the cigar mile result I I think if he wins it's done like I said but I think even if he loses I think people are going to look at the entirety of the year and say Maximum Security was the best 3-year-old male of the year Spun to Run really doesn't have any big wins other than the Breeders Cup Dirt Mile uh, Dirt Mile's a, a, a strong race, but I don't think it holds the the the, uh, the uh, power of, say, the Breeders' Cup Classic or any of the classic races or the Travers, for that matter. So 
I can't really see Splenda run stealing it from maximum security with a scar mile win. Um, it may open the door again for Omaha Beach if he comes back with a win later in the year and maybe coat of honor, but uh, I still like maximum security best. All right, Matt, let's go to the sprinters. Now, the sprint females, we've already kind of talked about. Uh, it, she was your three-year-old Philly champion, Kofefe, the daughter of Inda Mischief for LNJ Foxwoods. Uh, would seem to have this division over a barrel. Yeah, I think that is for sure. It has just gotten better and better and better with every start throughout the year, culminating with uh, the Breeders' Cup win. Yeah, like I said, Matt, she's only got two grade one wins this year, uh, the first being the test and then the second being the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. But when you look at her year in entirety, uh, five wins and a third and six starts, uh, it really came down to that Breeders' Cup uh, Philly and Mare Sprint because I think there were a couple other horses in there who could have won the award if they had won that race. But Kofefi won it. She won it impressively. She put a uh, exclamation point on an excellent year. And uh, again, trainer Brad Cox, I think Brad Cox will have two horses win the Eclipse Awards uh, in January. Certainly Kofefi is our Sprint female champion. How about the sprint male champion, Matt? Is there is there any question left? I, I don't see how there could be. I don't see how anybody could uh, in any way uh, vote for another horse. We're talking about Matoli here, of course, with a uh, campaign that that spanned the entire year. And, and to me, that that is just worth so much in consideration for these these awards because it's so rare these days when a horse can run almost the entire year and, and his victory at distances from six furlongs to a mile and that mile was in the spectacular met mile uh in june at belmont park breeders cup victory a sensational year Sensational year for sure. I'll give you one scenario, Matt. In their only meeting this year, Imperial Hint took Matoli down hard at Saratoga. I, I, I say that because there were other good sprinters this year, but the year that Matoli put together. Now, I don't think his year is quite as complete as a few more we're going to talk about down the list, but it's this day and age, it's, it's a pretty complete, comprehensive year that Matoli put together. We're talking about six wins and a third out of seven races. That mile was huge doing it at a longer uh, sprint distance, one turn at Belmont Park. That's a big race. I love them that mile, and Matoli got it done there. And then, of course, in the Breeders' Cup sprint, the race before that, the Forgo was a big win for Matoli. Son of Escandarea, trained by Steve Asmussen, Matoli was the best sprinter of the year for sure. This award is complete. Now, the turf female, Matt, as we go to the grass, the turf female is certainly not uh, a done deal because I'm looking at two uh, older females here, older grass uh, mares, five-year-old mares from the same barn, Chad Brown, who have very similar statistics. They're both ha they both have three wins and one-third out of only four starts this year. I'm talking about Uni, and I'm talking about Sister Charlie. Who was your choice for champion turf female this year? Well, Brian, it was uh, it, this was a tough one because, as you know, I I'm a very very big fan of Sister Charlie, and it certainly was not uh, at at her fault or at anybody's design, but her campaign this year kicked off late. It didn't kick off until Saratoga in the Diana. She had a lot, and that was not by design. She had a lot of little. Uh, things going on in the early part of the year. They wanted to have a longer campaign with her, uh, but but uh, it just didn't work out. Um, and then, as you said, Uni, Sister Charlie, very, very, very similar records. To me, it came down to the Breeders' Cup. No, they didn't run in the same race, but Uni won the Breeders' Cup mile, good field, beat Got Stormy, and Sister Charlie just came up short. Yeah, Sister Charlie came up short in the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Turf. Now, I will say a couple things in Sister Charlie's favor. If you look at grade one wins, Sister Charlie won three, Uni only won two. And if we're talking about this award off 
often you look a little bit towards the distance. And Sister Charlie was winning uh, her races at classic distances while Oni was really winning, specializing at the middle distance and, uh, and specifically a mile. However, I am with you. I, I, I really think the Breeders' Cup is important. And I think the Breeders' Cup mile beating males is every bit uh, the, uh, the task of the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf. And maybe even just a tiny bit more. Um, of course, the horse that ran second was got Stormy, who's another female. But that's another maybe point in Uni's favor because that's the horse that beat Uni this year, got Stormy earlier in the year. So she avenged that loss. Uni got it done at the Breeders' Cup. Unfortunately, Sister Charlie didn't. I see very similar records but I'm going Breeders' Cup as well as the deciding uh, uh, straw, if you will, in Uni's favor. Both five-year-old mares, both terrific for trainer Chad Brown. We like Uni by a nose over sister Charlie, Matt, and I imagine we'll be just as torn with the next Eclipse Award, of course, which is the turf male. Who are you going with in this division, sir? Yes, of course. It's the great bricks and mortar who uh, uh, has had an absolutely terrific uh, campaign this year and capped it off with, I thought, a spectacular performance, a traffic ridden, difficult trip to stretch out to, to a mile and a half for the very first time in his career in the Breeders' Cup turf. Of course, I was kidding. Bricks and Mortar is the turf champion, uh, the male turf champion of, uh, uh, of 2019. And you'd be hard pressed to say he wouldn't have been the male turf champion of any year in the 21st century. And, and yes, I know there were horses like Wise Dan out there, but that's how good Bricks and Mortar was this year. Matt, Matt used the word great, the great Bricks and Mortar. And, and, and part of me cringed a little bit because... Great is an adjective that I don't throw around too often with uh, with these uh, horses these days. And uh, Bricks and Mortar had a great year, Matt. You, yep. You're right. Uh, a son of the older, the top, the great sire, Giants Causeway. Bricks and Mortar was six for six this year. You mentioned it a little bit with Matoli, but I think Bricks and Mortar is the ultimate example of getting it done all year long. Only six races, I know. Uh, by today's standard, six is, is, is a good number. Six is not a lot by any stretch of the imagination. But he was winning huge races in January. He was winning huge races in the spring, the summer, and the fall. He did it all four seasons. He did it all over the country. Matt, he did it from distances from nine furlongs to 12 furlongs. Uh, Breeders' Cup turf, you're going to see on the graphic there. Breeders' Cup turf, Arlington Million, Pegasus World Cup turf, Manhattan, uh, the old Forester Turf Classic on, on Derby Day. What a year for Bricks and Mortar. He's your male turf champion. Duh. All right, Matt. Uh, let's go back to the dirt. We're going to talk about the older uh, older dirt horses now and uh, another good example of a, uh, a stellar complete year for the older female of the year. Our choice, of course, is Midnight Pursuit. Yeah, that is for sure. Again, uh, another really complete campaign, another Steve Asmussen horse. He, Asmussen, you know, he just seems to have a way uh, with horses to have these long campaigns. And as they run, they seem to get better and better and stronger and stronger, as he did with Matoli, as he did with Mid Midnight Pursuit, and a few years ago, as he did with, uh, with Gunrunner. Yeah, terrific year. It started in January uh, at Sam Houston Race Park, Matt. The Houston Ladies Classic, it started in January. And of course, she ran all year last year, uh, uh, finishing up in the Breeders' Cup uh, distaff last year. Unfortunately, she didn't win the Breeders' Cup distaff either year. That's the only blemish on what is a sparkling career resume, but even more sparkling 2019 uh, resume for Midnight Bisou. Daughter of Midnight Lute, Steve Asmussen, just like Brad Cox, he's going to get two Eclipse Award winners here. Midnight BC won the Ogden Phipps so impressively at Belmont. She won a, a, a dogfight, the race of the year in my estimation, the personal ensign. The Apple Blossom earlier in the year, she won the Bell Dam impressively. She was a little too far back. Blue Prize had her day in the Breeders' Cup to staff, but she rallied for second. Eight wins. Uh, I'm sorry, eight starts, seven wins, one second. Magnificent year, no question about it. As good as Blue Prize and a late may be, Midnight B. Sue is a clear older female dirt champion. 
the older male dirt champion. Not so clear, Matt. Who's your choice in this division? Yeah, here we go. I, I kind of end up back where uh, we were talking a little bit about the uh, three-year-old fillies when I went with Kafefe, the sprinter. I, I'm I'm going with the sprinter in here also. I'm going with Matoli as the older male dirt horse over Vino Rosso. I just feel like Matoli has a a, a deeper, longer campaign in uh in this year, uh, Matoli, his name is getting thrown out there by a lot of people as a possible candidate for horse of the year. I don't feel that way. I think he's going to be the second vote receiver in the horse of the year category. And to me, that says I have to pick him over Vino Rosso, who I have so much respect for and for Todd Pletcher and for everything that he turned into this year. Okay, so we're flashing the uh, the overall records in 2019 uh, for Matoli and Vino Rosso, and certainly Matoli's record this year is better than Vino Rosso's records by numbers alone. But I want to make two points here. First off, uh, the sprinters have an award. Kofefe, female sprinter. And Matoli, male sprinter, they have an award. Neither one attempted two turns this year. Matoli, Matoli won a race at a mile, and, I, and I, I do think that matters a little bit. But they have an award. If there's no good candidates for the other award, then by all means, I think they certainly can step in. Or if they're if they're dominantly better than the uh, the other horse, I don't think that's the case in these two awards, and I, and I don't think that's the case in the older male award. Vino Rosso really stepped up. Remember, he won a, a, a stakes race in New York uh, way back uh, pretty early in this year, Matt. And uh, his year certainly was not a, a short year either, but he got better throughout the year, culminating with a really big win. Let's face it, folks. He romped home in the Breeders' Cup Classic. His record says three of six. I think and this is something else you can debate. And Matt, Matt, Matt brought it up a little bit with maximum security. Do you get credit for a DQ? Do you not get credit for a DQ? Do you get credit for getting put up, for getting taken down? We don't know how much. That's an individual voter preference there. But I think Vino Rosso never should have. I've said it a few times on this show. Never should have come down in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I think he deserved that win. So what you see in the last four races is three huge wins in my eyes. The Santa Anita Gold Cup the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and the Breeders' Cup Classic, all at the classic distance of 10 furlongs. I think that matters in this war. Matoli never went two turns. Vino Rosso, romping winner of the Breeders' Cup Classic, and a strong year in his own right. For me, Vino Rosso wins the award. I'll let you get one more more word in for Matoli on this important decision, I think, Matt. Yeah, Brian, and, and, and I completely agree with what you said. And, and I think in my decision process, I didn't really think about that disqualification or not disqualification uh, in my thought process. I, I just thought about the fact that his performance in the Jockey Club Gold Cup was so impressive and was part of the campaign that he put together. But I don't know. If you're suggesting that that the older dirt male name needs to be changed to the older dirt distance male horse, well, maybe that's true, Brian. But I'm sticking with Matoli. And that's a little ironic, Matt, because of course this wasn't the older dirt male award that long ago. It, it only got changed when uh, the turf horses were, namely Wise Dan, was starting to. To, to steal this award away from the dirt horses. So they made it the older dirt female or older dirt male award. And, and, and now we're suggesting maybe it has to be the older dirt distant. That's too much for me, but I'm, I'm going Vino Russell. You're going Matoli. We'll see what happens. A very interesting uh, debate in this uh, important eclipse award. All right, Matt, that's 10 down. We only have one to go. It's the horse of the year award. Um, there, there's four candidates that I've seen uh, put out there, and, and two of them we just talked about, Vino Rosa and Matoli. Midnight Bisu is the uh, the fourth, and of course, uh, Bricks and Mortar would be the favorite. What do you think for the horse of the year? There's only one candidate in my mind, Brian, and that's Bricks and Mortar. Uh, what he accomplished this year, and, and you laid it out 
beautifully when we talked about the Turf Mail Award, um, Bricks and Mortar Horse of the Year. Bricks and Mortar is the Horse of the Year for me as well, Matt. And, and maybe the biggest thing, you know, we're, we're a country that uh, dirt dominates turf a little bit. Uh, but we've got a lot of good turf racing over here, and, and bricks and mortar was just sensational the entire year. But maybe the most impressive thing, besides January through November, besides all the different tracks that he won big races at, was the distance aspect. And you talked about it after the Breeders' Cup quite a bit. Uh, he was a, you know, they talked about running at Keeneland at a mile. He was a, a middle distance horse who certainly could excel at 10 furlongs. But then to take his 9 furlong and 10 furlong record, and throw him into the Breeders' Cup turf at 12 furlongs. That's a huge jump up. And he got it done. Six for six, bricks and mortar. Four seconds of the year, no doubt about it. All right, Matt, uh, that, that's our Eclipse Award show. I, I like that we got to talk about a lot of the biggest things that happened in 2019 as we discussed these horses. What a great list of 11 horses, 11 awards. We disagree on two. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the two-year-old male division. Uh, with Tis the Law coming uh, to Churchill Downs next week. But let me get a parting shot from you on this Eclipse Award prediction show. Yeah, and hey, and I think it's great that we've got some things up in the air, that we've got the Cigar Mile coming up. We've got Tis the Law running uh, uh, one of the top derby contenders. So I think that's great uh, for us finishing up uh, 2019, which certainly has been an interesting, interesting year of racing. And as always... We couldn't do the show without our great producer, Brett Workman. Absolutely, Matt. Well said on all points. Thank you to Brett. And, of course, thank you, folks, for tuning in to Horse Center here every week. Matt and I love doing the show, and we love having you join us every week. I want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there, their Derby Wars. And also, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel right here on Horse Racing Nation, hit that little red button for us now and you'll get uh, Horse Center coming to you every week. Matt and I don't miss a week here on Horse Center. We love doing it for you. Folks, we'll see you next week. But before we go, I, Matt, let's trail off with a uh, the maiden that everybody loved to love. The, the maiden that uh, uh, he ran second in the Florida Derby. Remember that Florida Derby now, Matt. First was Maximum Security. Third was Code of Honor. Who was in the middle? It was the maiden, Bodie Express. He lost his first seven races, folks. He, he got bothered in the Kentucky Derby. He dumped rider Johnny Velasquez right out of the gate in the Preakness. Well, Bodie Meister is back. He's hot. His second win in a row. Again, Gulf Stream Park West, Matt, he said it. So as we trail off, let's watch Bodie Express win yesterday in track record style. Pushing in. They're in the gate. And the race is on. Gump stumbled from that inside draw. Bodie Express got away in good order. In between horses, Malibu Music, Moretti coming through in between horses, and Gump trying to recover after that slow beginning as Bodie Express makes things tight on him in the first turn. Moretti had to check just a little bit there as Bodie Express makes the point. Length and a half more back to Gump in second. Moretti now all clear in the third position. Malibu Music getting a three-wide trip up from the outside. Postino's Val four-wide on that first turn. It's three more then back to Quality Special, and Union's Destiny is at the back, but Bodie Express to make the pace. Bodie Express onto the back stretch there, three quarters of a length. The Postino's Vow now price, apply some token pressure in that second position. Moretti still in and amongst horses as Gump moves up to that one's inside to put a nose into third. Length and a half more back to Malibu Music, who's now fifth, about five off the lead. It's three more then back to Quality Special, and Union's Destiny continues to trail. Bodie Express, a half mile from home, leads it by a length and a half. Gump coming through down toward the inside of Postino's Vow. They're together second, third. Moretti continues to wait from fourth, is going to launch a three wide bid now as Bodie's Express goes into the the turn. Here's Moretti, who now moves up a couple of spots, puts a nose into that second spot. Gump stays down toward the rail in third. Postino's Val pushed along from fourth between runners. Moretti did not go on with that move, and Bodie's Express is kicked away. Bodie Express coming to the quarter pole, a four and a half or five length lead. Gump is up into that second position. Postino's Val, Moretti did not go on, is back in fourth. Five more back to Union's Destiny, who tries to close in. Bodie Express comes to the furlong pole, still in front by four and a half. Down the outside, Gump trying to make a race of it from second. It's another five, then back to Postino's Val, but Bodie Express. Boy, does he look good coming down the lane. Bodie Express and Emisio Jaramillo going to win this one by about six or seven in the end. Gump was second. It was another eight or nine. Back to Postino's Val, who got third. Fourth was Union Destiny.